All right, what's going on, everyone? So there is a theory, not a fact, a theory of a secret U.S.-Chinese agreement to not escalate the war between Russia and Ukraine. It has to do with some back-channel talks between the United States and China, where the United States kind of caps what Ukraine will do in terms of capabilities, and China kind of walks Russia back from maybe some of their more extreme plans. It's kind of related to the item that was in the news recently about how the U.S. has been altering the HIMARS so they can't fire the longer range missiles, the ATACMs, or even something that Ukraine builds on their own. That pissed off a lot of people. But it would kind of be in line with what this potential secret back deal arrangement is. The article I'm going off of here was in The Spectator. It's titled Revealed Biden and Xi's Secret Ukraine Talks by Owen Matthews. I'll put a link in the description below. And for the last time before we get started, I would say that it is a theory at this point, And it's probably not something that we're going to know for sure for, I mean, at least 10, maybe 20, 30, 40 years after this conflict ends. All right, to get right into it, this theory kind of centers around the proposal and subsequent cancellation, I guess maybe is the way to put it, of Poland sending their MiG-29s to Ukraine back in March, right at the beginning of the conflict. So a big part of this backdrop is kind of the confusion of what role China is actually playing in this conflict and how Putin may have thought they had more of China's backing than they actually did. A couple examples that the author points out here as to where China sits kind of in this whole conflict. He says that Foreign Minister Wang of China said to his counterpart, Sergei Lavrov, that, quote, China will firmly support the Russian side under the Russian leadership of Vladimir Putin to unite and lead the Russian people, right? They're 100% behind them. They're in their corner. Whatever Russia is going to do, China's there. It's kind of what that sounds like. But then in September, Wang told the NATO Secretary General Stoltenberg that China, quote, stays open-minded to dialogues and exchanges with NATO and is willing to jointly promote the sound and steady development of bilateral relations in the spirit of honesty and mutual respect. So at a very high level, it looks like China is kind of agreeing with everybody. They're playing every side in this war in Ukraine. It's not really surprising for China to be playing both sides of something for their potential benefit, but I don't think very many people expected them to do that at Russia's expense. If you think back to the very early days of this conflict, I remember hearing speculations that Taiwan was about to be invaded, as though there was some secret Russia-Chinese agreement to kick off simultaneous wars. And especially recently, that relationship's been pretty tight between China and Russia. So it's not crazy to think that in Putin's calculations in terms of going to war in Ukraine, that China would be by his side at the very least diplomatically. But supposedly what Putin actually did in Ukraine kind of surprised China. The article says, quote, though the Chinese officially supported Putin diplomatically, blaming NATO for provoking the conflict, there was deep and entirely well-founded concern that Putin had overreached and would provoke the West into a united front that a limited operation in Donbass would have avoided. That fits the common sense test, doesn't it? I mean, if you look at what's played out between Russia and Ukraine since 2014, the invasion in 2022 was a drastic escalation. Certainly the start of hostilities in 2014 put this conflict really on the international radar. Sanctions hit Russia, Western arms flowed into Ukraine, more Western trainers started helping stand up Ukrainian units. But it was nowhere near what happened after the February 2022 invasion. But I think it was entirely reasonable to expect Russia to do something very similar to that, maybe in a few different areas, maybe a little bit of a step up, but not rolling entire battalion tactical groups, armored columns across the border trying to, what looked like, take the entire country. Continuing with the article, it says, quote, Putin's threat of nuclear escalation on February 27th alarmed the world, including the Chinese. A key priority for Beijing was the Russo-NATO confrontation to, quote, avoid any nuclear escalation and to help in reaching a ceasefire, said the source, who has regular personal contact with the leaders of the People's Liberation Army. Now Putin had, recklessly in Chinese eyes, played his most dangerous card right at the beginning of the conflict. This is another one where I'm not exactly sure how to phrase it. The risk of nuclear war is absolutely there. I don't think it's decreased over the last few months since the war began, but there is definitely more worry early on. There's a little more aggressive commentary coming out of Russia at the beginning of the conflict in terms of warning the West to stay away. 
I think at the same time, the boundaries of what NATO could or couldn't do in this conflict were still being determined by everybody. So every additional step felt like it could be the thing that could trigger an escalation, and an escalation could lead to a nuclear war. So I don't know that we're any less likely to enter a nuclear conflict today, you know, recording this on December 6th, than we were at the beginning of the war. It just doesn't seem like it's front and center as much as it used to be. So that kind of sets the background for this potential U.S.-China agreement. Shortly after the war kicked off, Poland, kind of out of nowhere, there were some reports that this offer really surprised a lot of people at the Pentagon. Anyways, Poland offered to send their MiG-29 fighter jets to Ukraine with the hopes or with an agreement that they would be replaced over time by a similar U.S. platform. Now, you got to go back into the mindset of March, April during the war in Ukraine. There was hesitation for every single item that went over there. Small arms and anti-tank weapons seemed to have a clear pass, but tanks seemed off the table. Helicopters were off the table. Aircraft were off the table. HIMARS, long-range rocket systems, were off the table. We were very, con- we, NATO, I would say, was very concerned about what might be considered an escalation in Putin's eyes. Over time, more and more of these things have been sent into Ukraine, but there's kind of a cap. Certain things that NATO is unwilling to send. ATACMs, the long-range missile that can be fired from a HIMARS, seems to be one of them. And, you know, modern fighter jets appears to be another. This deal to send MiG-29s wasn't crazy. Ukraine operated MiG-29s in their Air Force. So this is one of those where Poland could transfer them. And realistically, in a matter of a day or two, Ukraine could have them airborne protecting their skies. I think it's even worth mentioning that even today, looking back, the transfer of, I think it was around 30 MiG-29s, it would have been symbolic but it wouldn't have changed the course of the war, right? I don't think there's a number of aircraft on the Ukrainian side that would have significantly altered where the conflict sits today. There's just a flooding of anti-air defenses all across the country on both sides. But when this deal initially came out, the U.S. was lukewarm, I guess. They didn't jump right on it. It was a pretty significant offer on behalf of Poland. And I think the U.S. was looking into it. And then before long, they just kind of dropped the hammer and said, nope, not tenable, don't do it. They kind of tiptoed here, but not really. And I think this gets into a little bit of the maybe power the U.S. has within NATO, being able to kind of influence what some of these countries will or will not send. I don't want to say it was a no-brainer, but it seemed like a good deal. Ukraine was going to get more fighter jets that they needed, that they already knew how to operate. And at the same time, Poland, a NATO member, would receive, over time, U.S. equipment that was more modern and would fit more within the NATO arsenal. But something happened, and it just stopped. So according to this theory in the article, there were some back-channel contacts between Washington and China. China viewed the transfer of these MiGs as opening the door to a broader escalation. So through these back-channel talks, according to this theory... They said that if the U.S. were to stop the MiG deal, then China would do their best to get Putin to kind of walk back some of his more aggressive nuclear comments. And both of those things kind of happened. Now, Chinese support for Russia throughout this war hasn't changed all that much publicly. But one area that I think this points to is that militarily, China has not been there for Russia like from the start. These are two militaries that do a lot of training together, have a lot of cooperation, all things considered. But if you look at what Russia's had to do over the last few months, when they're running low on ammunition, there's reports of them going to North Korea, not China. When they need more drones and newer missiles, they're going to Iran, not China. But where is China in all of this? There's a bunch of other angles, the economic, the political, I got it. But when it comes to military hardware, I think there was long an expectation and a belief that China would backfill Russian stockpiles as needed or would serve as the manufacturing base for Russia if needed. And that really does not appear to be happening. So if we package all this together, and it's messy, I know, it's a theory, remember? Working theory. I will have to wait probably a while for the true story to come out here. But the idea is that China is not allowing Russia to go full bore into Ukraine because they're not providing the additional equipment. They're not providing the military backstop. 
They're talking them down when it comes to using deadlier or more devastating weapons like nuclear devices in Ukraine. And then on the NATO side, the agreement is that the U.S. will kind of cap what type of systems NATO will send into Ukraine, which certainly means NATO troops on the ground or aircraft overhead, but also means modern helicopters, fighter jets, and long-range missiles that could strike deep inside Russia, potentially further escalating the conflict. So China's kind of trying to play this like peacekeeping role, making the best of a bad situation is what it sounds like. But to sum it up, I'll use a line from the article that says, quote, Beijing hopes to improve relations with NATO and Europe by bringing an end to a bloody and futile war that its ally Putin began so recklessly. All right, that's it. So what do you think? Is there some sort of secret U.S.-Chinese deal to keep a lid on what's happening in Ukraine? It kind of makes sense, but there's not usually a ton that the United States and China agree on. So I guess we'll have to wait and see. But either way, that'll do it for now. We'll see y'all next time.